What's up guys, Stefan here. Welcome to a brand new video where today I want to be sharing with you my story of how I went from a refugee or someone just, you know, going away from his country, my parents being people who are, who left my country before the war happened and how I went from that where my parents almost had nothing to being a 50,000 plus per month business owner and scaling my businesses up to close to seven figures. So I wanted to get it back to pretty much just the point of, you know, how it all got started, right? Because all of you just, you know, come to this profile and you might be, you might be interested in learning more about how you can pretty much just, you know, start your own business or grow your own business, right? Now, without you knowing my story, you cannot actually just, you know, understand why I'm saying the things that I'm saying, because all of the things that I'm actually sharing with you have been proven to work on my own business. So I'm always a proponent of sharing things that actually work in my business. So you can use them in your business because I've already tested them and you can pretty much just copy me in terms of like, you know, what I've done that works. Now to take it all the way back, I think it will also give you an idea of maybe you are in that same position as, as I was. Maybe you're someone who's at the same level or maybe a little bit less, maybe someone who's a little bit further, then it even might give you insights that you could take and then pretty much just start implementing for yourself so you can actually make a quantum leap forward as well. So I'll take it all the way back to 1996 when I was born. I was born in 1996 in the Netherlands where I'm originally from. Now I live in Dubai, as you, most of you all I think know. And my parents came into the Netherlands in 1992. They came with one suitcase. They came with pretty much almost no luggage. They were about 21 years old and they, yeah, they pretty much just came to the Netherlands when kind of the, you know, pretty much like the Serbian Bosnian war kind of started and started like escalating and all those things. So when I pretty much was born, you know, I understood that when I was a kid that we didn't have much, right? Like we didn't have the luxuries that some other people in the Netherlands would have. And as you would think that they would have. Now I'm not saying I I'd had a, like a, you know, excruciatingly ghetto upbringing at all. Like, you know, my parents always told me like that they were just making sure that they pretty much just gave me and my little sister who was born five years after me, they gave us the best life possible. Right now, what I learned from that is that it's always important to understand where you come from, because if you understand where you came from, if you understand your past, you can adjust your present and know what you want in the future and then manifest it. But that's another story for another video. So when I started pretty much being a kid, I understand that we didn't have much, right? But it didn't hold me back to pretty much just enjoy my life. So I went to a school where there were mostly you know, kids with different ethnicities, different places, which was good. Honestly, it learned me to pretty much just understand different cultures from that day on. Now, when my parents came, I understood that they didn't have it best, right? Like they were, of course, trying to sugarcoat it, trying to show me that there's actually, you know, that it's good, but we didn't live in the best places. So when I started growing up, I understood that I really wanted to do to give something back to them. They were doing everything that they could to pretty much support me, support us as a family, work 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day. It's pretty stressful. And as a kid, I already started to understand that giving back to people was also something that I, I like to do. Like I like to give back to people, meaning in whatever way, shape or form. So for example, I just came off a call and it wasn't the best fit for my program, but I still helped that person as much as I could with the knowledge that I have. Now that started already when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I was already looking at ways to pretty much just help people and start pretty much, you know, assisting people in different ways and shapes or forms. For example, in my school, in my elementary school, I was pretty much just helping other kids to get better grades. I was trying to teach them things that they could do. I was already coaching them. I was already doing the thing that I'm doing these days, which is pretty much just coach people on what they could do to improve their life, right? So. Well, I'm just trying to hold this camera. I think I'm going to maybe buy a stick to pretty much hold this camera because this is insane, man. But anyways, so I was just trying to help these people and trying to help these kids. 
which were my same age. And that's when I fell in love in actually helping people, when I started looking back at it. Now, as years advanced, we didn't have much still, but we were satisfied with what we had. There was a lot of stress. There was a lot of things, you know, that I had to handle as a kid that normal kids wouldn't have to handle, which is stressful environments, violence, all of these things that you can, as a kid, not understand unless you've gone through it. For example, if a kid grows up in Dubai, they probably wouldn't, wouldn't see those things, right? Maybe to an extent, but like not that much. So I learned the ways of how to, you know, act with people, how to do with people, how to be with people, how to learn all the ins and outs of actually being a human being. Now, up until my 16th, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I was always someone who was really passionate and ambitious, but that mostly came through my parents because they came from Eastern Europe, you know, having to pretty much flee a country where you've lived your entire life, going back to a country and going to a country where you pretty much don't know the language, you don't know anything, having to pretty much just, when I was born, like pick me up because I was with my grandma and grandpa, and pretty much then things again escalated in Eastern Europe, so they had to pick me up when things were just, you know, falling into pieces pretty much in, um, in the place where we were staying at, right? So they had to pick me up and I was, I still remember those things as a kid, so that, you know, bombs were going off and all of kind of, you know, ridiculous things were happening. So, and I'm not saying that to have pity, like I do, I'm just saying that pretty much to give an idea of what I've been, you know, through in that sense. I think it's all a learning experience, right? We learn and we live. That's pretty much how I live my day to day and how I recommend people to live as well, because you only have one life and you can only learn from the things that you've been through. So as the years went on, you know, I understood which, you know, from which place I came from. I always didn't know like who I was. Like I was always experiencing like pretty much like this like imposter syndrome. Like I was Dutch, but then again, I wasn't Dutch. I came from Eastern Europe, but then again, I wasn't Eastern European because I didn't speak the language fluently. And then, you know, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know if I was Dutch or Eastern European or like what, what, what I was, right? So I always had this identity crisis, I would almost say, like pretty much of like, who am I, right? Like, who am I and what, what am I doing here, pretty much? Like, what's my purpose? Like, I was already looking at what's my purpose when I was pretty much from the age of six to the age of 16. So went to elementary school, went to, went to pretty much just, you know, middle school. And when I went there, I pretty much just realized that when I was talking with a teacher, with a history teacher, she told me like, you know, you're really good at coaching people. You're really good at just when you know what you're talking about, like giving people advice. And I was like, interesting because I'm, I'm pretty introverted. You know, naturally I'm pretty introverted. So I was, I was pretty much just finding myself throughout the years, right? I was just finding myself throughout the years of what I could do and what I could give people. And then when she told me that, I was like, hmm, maybe that's pretty much what I want to do. Maybe that's exactly where I want to go to. So I went to pretty much my college and got a college degree. I did sports science. And that sports science for those four years pretty much brought me to a stage of where in my third year, my minor, I pretty much started doing entrepreneurship. And when I found entrepreneurship, that was it for me. Like pretty much like I knew that that was what I was going to do for the rest of my life probably and for forever or at least for the time being because I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed thinking of new ideas, implementing them, having the freedom to think freely. Now while well, school can say you can think freely and all those things, they don't really give you that. So I was searching for that. I was searching for something to think freely and pretty much just have something where I can experiment, where I can coach people, where I can help people, where I can guide people where I can take it to the next level. So as I was doing that, I already started my business. So my first business that I started was in 2015 or 2016. It was a clothing business. Okay. And I got some inspiration from someone you might know or don't. It's he's called Ben, uh, Ben Francis from Gymshark. And also from someone else called Christian Guzman from Elf Elite Athletics. And I also got inspiration from Yoon Olsen, a Swedish guy who was pretty much just an influencer and showcasing all of these crazy cars and crazy lifestyle that he had in Spain. So when I saw these people, I was like, man, I want to document everything. And then I stumbled upon Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary Vaynerchuk was saying like, yo, you know, Gary V, you know, you should, you should do like content, document everything. So I started documenting everything. I was posting videos of me going to the gym. I was posting videos of me 
launching new products. Maybe there's some videos on my YouTube channel that I've still, you know, put live where I put those videos because I did them all in English. I really wanted to become like an influencer, like a fitness influencer. So what I started doing in 2016 to 2017 is I started creating a community called the Online Fit Group. You know, Online Fitness Group, Online Fit Group, whatever you want to call it. So when I pretty much just got into that, I connected with a lot of people. I used my network to pretty much create an online fitness group. And that online fitness group then led me to selling more of my merch, which people then ended up buying for like 50, 60, piece, you know, a pop. They pretty much just started buying my shirts and buying my you know, hats and all those things. And by word to mouth, I already started selling these things, not knowing anything about selling. So I think I made, I made about like one one k bucks, you know, one k. I think I made like one k of selling the t-shirts and everything from my merch. Until I really understood that the fitness thing was not really my thing; it was more of a temporary thing, which I just wanted to do as a hobby, not something that I wanted to actually go and pursue because I don't necessarily have the capacity to pretty much have the ultimate body or something. I didn't want to go to that route. I wanted to go more the route of entrepreneurship. I really liked entrepreneurship. But within fitness, I found entrepreneurship where I built a community, made videos, online fit group, like network events and all those things. And I was doing like pretty, pretty good things with that being said, right? And then all of a sudden I stumbled upon this one guy, a 16 year old living a lavish life. At least that's how it looked in his ads called Iman Gadji, who was 16 years old. And I was like, man, this, this kid is pretty much just I'd work with me and by, by this time I was 19. So me as a 19 year old looking at him and I was like, man, this dude is pretty living like well, you know, he's talking about like earning 20K per month, living a lavish life, getting girls, getting cars. That's a life that I wanna live. So pretty much when I, you know, stumbled upon it and I was like, you know, man, like this is the route I wanna go to. And then I just started looking into what he was doing. I watched some videos. I watched his Instagram. I saw that he was living a pretty luxury life, a pretty above standard life uh, that no one else was doing at the time. So when I saw that, I was like, hey, this is pretty much where I wanna go to, so let me invest in this person. Now, keep in mind, I didn't know anything about online marketing. I didn't know anything about like these ads or like these strategies or these marketing funnels or like anything like that. The only thing I knew is that I wanted to have the end result right? Which I now understand is the most important thing. Like if you need to want to have the end result, show people the end result, which I'm kind of doing also in this video for you. Like I'm showcasing you like I'm in Dubai. This is pretty much the end result of why, what I wanted to do. Now, is there a level higher? Yeah, pretty much, right? Of course, who doesn't want to go higher? If you don't want to go higher as an entrepreneur, you're pretty much stuck forever. But I'm helping you guys as well start or scale your agency coaching or consulting business. By the way, if you want to check that out, go into the link down below and you'll find everything that you need to know about this. Anyways, so pretty much I saw Iman and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take all my money that I've made with my online fit group type of thing, my, my merch. And I was also at the time giving personal training. So I was doing like a bunch of different things. I was giving personal training to people. I was helping people, uh, giving them merch, giving them all these kinds of things. And then pretty much I, it escalated towards me going into online marketing because I understood like marketing is gonna lead me to more sales. So if I would buy this thing off of this guy who's doing marketing, I would learn things off of marketing. And then from learning those things from marketing, be able to utilize it to get more sales. Ended up not being that way, but you get the gist. So I invested in him and then I, he started talking about, you know, you should run this social media marketing agency. And I was like, what is this guy talking about man? Like social media marketing agency, like what? Um, so whilst I was still in my internship, in my last year internship, whilst I was giving personal training to people, whilst I was pretty much selling this merch, having this online fit community, doing a bunch of things, trying to become a fitness influencer, this dude was screaming at me at 16 years old, making 20K per month, living in a really luxury Chelsea area in London, which is a pretty exclusive area, you know, which I came to realize after. I realized pretty much that he was going to be the person that's probably gonna get me to that end result, right? Like he was gonna be probably the person that was gonna be the closest to my you know, ideal situation at that time and who I could relate to as well. So without even thinking and blinking, I was pretty much just convinced that he was gonna help me, you know, get me, get me the results. So when I, when I decided that, you know, when I decide something, man, it's probably the Eastern Europe in me, 
like when I decide something, I'm really stubborn. Like you won't get it out of me. Like I just, I just, I just pretty much go all in or I don't go all, you know, I go all out. That's pretty much how I am. So when I decided to pretty much just work, you know, and invest in him, you know, I put almost 1500 into his program. And I remember saying to my mom, like, this program is 1500. I'm going to make this decision. And either you stand behind me or you don't. And when I told her that, she was like, please be careful with your money and what you do. I trust you, but be careful. So my parents, one thing that they also learned me, which I forgot to tell is, they, they always had trust in me, even though they were really strict. They always had trust in me. They always said like, you know, Stefan, you're, you, you know, you know, your you know, your thing. Like, if you want to do something, we stand behind it. We're not going to keep you from doing it. There's no reason to it. And they gave me the freedom, which I think parents, it's really important that they do that. Up until a certain age, give your kids the freedom to explore, man. Because, like, if they don't explore, they, they won't know what they like, right? And, um, you know, so I invested in E-Man. And I told my mom, you know, it's going to be a big investment. But it's not going to be a big investment when I come back in a couple of years and retire you. She was like, Stefan, like, stop. Like... You know, what, what are you talking about? You know, Eastern European moms are like, they're, they're used to so many like, you know, a throw like crazy things. So they're like, yeah, 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 it's all good. Like show me first then, you know, whatever. So I put all of my money in that I've made. It was my last, last specific investment um, or like first investment that I made, but my last money that I had on my bank. I invested it in my fourth year of my college and I went all in. And Eman told me like, you know, you should sign you should do this, you should find a niche, you should have an offer, and you should pretty much just go to clients and call them up, cold call them, cold email them, and that's it. You know, it was a pretty basic course, like nothing that's spectacular, like for example, what, what I've created right now with the business blueprint, but we also have an agency blueprint program, which is 14 weeks, like the most extensive program ever. Anyways, you know, we pretty much just went on to go through that program. When I say we, I did it with one of my best friends, who's still my COO right now, um, you know, Kaho, and he pretty much is, is an amazing Kaho if you're watching this man. God bless you. Um, but, you know, I started investing the time and energy in those things. So I made a big investment. It was a leap of faith. Ended up working out well because I pretty much just now here in Dubai, as you can see, looking at pools and palms and whatever. So, when I invested, I started looking at it and then I approached one of my classmates. I was in class and he told me, he saw, he told me like, he asked me like, Stefan, what are you doing with this marketing? I'm, I'm like, bro, you know what? I'm, I'm just, you know, doing some social media management, like posting content for clients, all those things. I'm still looking for clients. And he was like, man, I think you should honestly like work with one of my clients that I have. You know, I'm promoting their, their, their drinks and all those things. You should work with them, man. So I met up with this woman and I'll never forget it. Like, uh, Natasha was her, was her name and... I pretty much closed her on the first deal because we already had trust through the mutual friend. And that's when I understood that getting your first few agency clients or coaching clients or consulting clients is easiest to get through your network. And some people don't realize that they have a network. If you have a family, you have a network. If you have friends, you have a network. If you have colleagues, you have a network. And by using my network, I signed up her and then I offered her a free trial month. And then after that, 800 per month. She did it. I didn't know what I was doing. I was so happy. I was practicing my sales script just before I went into her office. And I was pretty much just, I was ecstatic that I closed her. And I started thinking about, oh, I'm going to close this client and that client and this client. And I'm going to do so many things, like pretty much just, you know, scale this thing up. Then I went on to sign another client, which was a yoga studio. I traveled with the train for like two hours, sat with her, pitched her on a free trial month. I don't know why I did that though, but like, yeah, I did it. And then pretty much after the free month, I told her, if you like what you see, uh, you're going to pay me 800 per month. She said, okay, we made pictures for her and she was happy with it. And we kept going. So that was my second client. And then my third, fourth, fifth client were restaurants because I decided for some reason to choose restaurants as a niche. And I thought it would be a good niche to go with because they are more salesy. They know what they're talking about, right? That's what I thought. So I signed three restaurants for a price of 400 per month. So at this time, I was pretty much just running an agency doing 2,800 per month. I think I signed a couple of more clients. So I was doing, I think close to like three and a half, 4K per month. 
I was living the life. I was studying, I was doing some work on the side, and this business was just making me like amazing money. And I was like, this has been a month and a half. Imagine what I can do in a year and a half. So then Iman came again and he said, you know what? I'm hosting a mastermind. It's gonna be 6K, whoever wants to come. Oh no, I think it was 3K, three or 4K. Whoever wants to come, you're welcome, but you have limited spots. Nice marketing. So I went on that, went on a call with him, talked with him one-on-one, said to him, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna find the money. Now keep in mind, I was only making 2.8K and I was splitting it with my back at the time business partner, Kaho was my business partner, now we're not business partners, now we, I'm the sole owner pretty much, but back at the time we were. So I split everything with him. So I pretty much didn't know how I was gonna fix the money, but I just figured out a way to find the money. I went to London, I came to London, first time ever, went to him and experienced two days of... All right, so I think my phone was just cooking and I was cooking too much again, it's too hot. Anyways, um, it was this two day mastermind and now, man, I'm, I'm looking back at pretty much just me having my own mastermind in like two months. So it's, it's been a blessing. Now, with that being said though, I invested it and it was a game changer. I learned how he was, what he did, how I was able to scale my business by doing ads. Because I was doing, keep in mind, like social media management and content for all of these clients that I've signed. It took me a lot of time. I had to go physically to them, shoot, sell them on that, and then pretty much hope that they're gonna continue with me while I was not, wasn't delivering them an ROI-based service. I was just delivering them a social ROI type of service, maintain, maintain, maintenance type of service. So eventually these clients told me like, hey, we're not gonna do this. And I was slowly transitioning from uh, a service which is like more maintenance and management to an ROI-based service. So when I did that, and when I switched to the ROI-based service, I started you know, slowly shifting these clients to an ROI-based service, losing some in the process because some of them didn't wanna go through with the ads. They just wanted content. And I explored the ways of me running ads for them and then signed them on to a higher fee. So I went pretty much from running 2.8K with a lot of work putting in 10 hour days to running ads and making 6K per month within the next like four to five months. Now, it wasn't as you know linear as I'm telling you right now because there were stages where I was thinking of getting back to work because I finished my school, I finished my college and I wasn't earning enough. Like I was, still, I was only earning like 1400 per month. And I wanted to take care of my mom, right? Like I wanted to take care of her, take care of the family, take care of, you know, be the man of the house at you know the age of 19 or 20. And I needed more. So I almost went back to working in nine to five and I actually did for a certain time. I went to a cold, call, cold calling center and I worked pretty much for about four months at that period until I've scaled up to 6K. And while working at the call center, I realized that sales is just not my thing. I mean, it is my thing though, like I made it my thing, but I'm just not naturally gifted at being a good salesman. Like I, I had to learn it to myself. And I learned it a lot through that call center. Now I talk a lot, you would think I'm extrovert, but I'm not. So when I worked there, I realized what my strengths are, which is systems, strategically thinking, and pretty much just scaling businesses. That's what I'm good at because I help them scale their business too, right? So when I pretty much just, you know, was there, I was trying to combine my agency work with what I was doing there. And I was just at every lunch break having calls with potential clients. And I told myself, I'm earning 1500 per month here. If I can sign three clients at like a, a, a specific price of 500 per month per client, 600 per month per client, I'm gonna quit here immediately because I cannot do this anymore. So actually biking towards that call center every single day, it took me like 15 minutes to pretty much just bike through there. So, you know, when I was doing that, I, I realized, you know, I need to change. I need, this needs to change. Like I'm not gonna keep on doing this. So when I pretty much just realized that, I ended up signing three clients that were all real estate agents in the span of a couple of days, making me 1600 per month, 500 a pop. One was I think 600. So I was sitting at a 1500, 1600 per month. When I had that, I told the call center, I told them like, I'm done, man. I was calling like half, like I was like, I don't know, like, uh, call and then have a meeting for myself in another office. And I was pretty good with them and all of them. And um, yeah, I ended up like signing those clients and just quitting immediately. Like I didn't care. And that's something I would give you as a tip. If you're currently still working, make sure to make at least the same amount as you do with 
you know, your job before you actually quit or before you actually do anything. Like I see so many people say like, oh, you need to just jump in the fire. No, 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 no. You're not gonna just push yourself by just quitting your job. You need stability. You need to be able to invest into your business. Like it's all a money thing. So you gotta be smart about it. Money money doesn't come easily, I always say, but you know, when you, when you spend it, it, it goes out easily, man, right? So then I went from those real estate clients. I decided, you know what, man? This market is untapped, especially in the Netherlands because I signed all Dutch clients, which I always recommend that having clients locally, I pretty much realized that I could sign like pretty much the 20 of these clients. So what I ended up doing is I had a fixed price at 1K per month and I ended up signing at my peak 23 clients, making myself 23K per month. And that was all done within a time span of, of nine months from 20. 19 or 2020 the beginning of 2020 to the end of 2020 i went from making 1500 per month with a job and 1500 with my agency agency making like or like 3k to pretty much going from 3k to 24k all in a time span of nine months and then i realized man you know honestly like the agency model was making 10K per month. I had an interview with Iman, which is still my profile, one of my most viewed videos. You can watch that definitely if you want to check it out. But I realized like, is this my end goal? Is my end goal the agency? Or is my end goal my fulfilling my purpose? And then I understood fulfilling my purpose, purpose is actually coaching people, helping people. So what happened then is I ended up scaling this agency to about 60, uh, 50 to 60 real estate clients in the Dutch market and the UK market. I was doing close to like 30, 40 K. And then I started my coaching business because people started coming to me and they were saying, Stefan, how do you do this? Can you help me too? And I was like, I'll do it for free. And I helped like 10 people for free until they told me like, Stefan, you should charge something for this. Like I, I, I would be willing to pay you money for your time because this is really helpful. And I was like, sure, what would you pay me? They were like, 100 bucks, 150 bucks. I was like, great, I was like, amazing. So I made a Canva presentation talking about the importance of like growing your Instagram, having a SMMA, all those things. And I sold it to two people for 500. And I was like, there's something in this. Like there's something in this. Like not only am I helping people, they're mostly doing it themselves and I can scale this up. So I was like, I'll keep my agency because that's pretty much just a, uh, uh, a means to an end it's not the end and i'll just build you know something which i want to do for the rest of my life which is my coaching business now called for success helping people to actually start or scale their own agency coaching or consulting business so i ended up scaling that coaching business also to 50k per month so i was doing close to like you know six figures pretty much with both of those businesses the agency was outsourced had that done with the team and the coaching business was running skip forward ahead to today i have both businesses still running doing close to six figures still doing well and i moved to dubai just pretty much end of last year which was 2023 so going from the end of 2020 to now the only thing i pretty much realized and a couple of things that i realized is that luck is isn't just there like luck is created for the ones that want to work with, with, you know, for it. So what do I mean with that? Luck wasn't created for me. I had to work my butt off. But eventually when I worked my butt off, it actually came to me. Like I had so many realtors, I didn't know what to do with them. And now I work with coaches. I work with agency owners and, and consultants. That's like my niche now. And I, through building something and getting a sustainable income, which I think is really good to do with an agency, I pretty much built something so I could fulfill my purpose afterwards. And I think so many people get stuck on finding that one thing that can give them pretty much the stability, which an agency model or any service delivery, you know, service-based model can do pretty much. And give you that stability so you can invest it back into pretty much your purpose. So that's what I think. And that's pretty much my journey from going from an Eastern European kind of refugee, I would say, you know, pretty much to, to my parents having that, to building a almost close to multiple six figure type of business. And so the last years I've been pretty much just looking, what do I want to do with my business? And I decided to pretty much say, you know what? I want to have a business where, you know, I'm, I'm running it freely. And it's pretty much just something that I pretty much just want to keep on running with like my, you know, coaching business, keep my agency on autopilot, which I still have. 
And then whilst my agency is on autopilot, make sure that I have stability from there still, but that I can pretty much just be creative with my coaching business. So when I decided to do that, results just started coming because the thing is what I understood is results come when you're creative and when you enjoy what you're doing. Like my agency could make me so much money, but it's just not a passion thing for me. Like it's, it's just there to pretty much make money and make my, give my clients results, right? Which it should be for you as well if you're starting or whatever you're doing. If that's your passion, great, keep it, keep it going, right? Like keep on doing it. But for me, I found my purpose in something else, which is coaching people, helping people. Maybe you're one of the coaching people that I'm helping right now. That's something I really found purpose in. So my recommendation to you would be, and what you could maybe take from the story, is that no one's story is linear. As you heard, like I worked at a call center after I had my agency. I had to have sustainability, stability, before I could have my own agency running. I had to work. So my advice would be to my younger self would be work harder, invest more, and pretty much just keep on doing what you're doing because eventually it will come. Because people don't understand that business takes time. It's not just something that you're gonna do one day and then get results. So whilst you have stability from your job, you can pretty much slowly start to invest all of that money into your business until it actually starts growing by itself. That's what I did. That's what I recommend all of the students that I coach today to do. So now that you know my background, hopefully you understand more why I'm making these videos. So I'm making these videos to inspire you. I'm making these videos to show you how you can do it, whether you're starting or want to scale it, because I've been through it all. I've been through the days where I've had like more than 60 plus clients managing them all. I've been through the program having more than 400 people in the community managing them all. I've been through all of these things, making more than 1.2 million, I think it was, up until today, and pretty much just running my business now creatively, happily, waking up every single day, and not being able to wait until I have my next coaching sessions with all my students in the program. Now, if you're someone who wants to really join a program made by someone who's so you know, willing to give back, not doing it for the money because I honestly like I'm, I'm good. Like I, I, like I said, I'm in Dubai. I'm enjoying life. I don't really need much. And I think there's a power in that when you don't need and you get, you want to give it's of course I want to grow my business. Who doesn't? But there's for me, no need for me to sell you on something. Like, it's just like, if you want to great, if not, then that's all fine too. So if you want to learn more about that, check out the link down below, like this video, subscribe to the channel. I hope this gave you a little bit of a better idea where I came from, growing up from growing up to the Netherlands in the east of the Netherlands, pretty much from a refugee perspective, and then from a perspective of like growing up with my parents, seeing someone on the ads, maybe you see my ads, growing to a point where I can pretty much just, you know, put in my last money investing in Iman. I think I spent like 7K on him total, now making it to Dubai, and all those investments were made back just by those simple decisions that I made. So that was my journey, that was my story, and now we're on the mission to pretty much with Force Success build the best educational university for anyone who wants to start or scale their own online business. So with that being said, I wanna thank you for watching. I hope you found this video informative. It's a little bit of a other video than another video than I usually make with giving advice. Hope you liked it. If so, like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.